from uh, Danfoss. Well, it's a big uh, Danish company, um, international company, and um, they were the, they were running this program for postgraduate, and uh, they had the same problem. We always end up with this kind of PowerPoint presentation. Can you help us? I was very honored. They came to me. Someone like me to ask me, what can we do? I don't still, still don't know exactly what to do, but we need to do something else. Perhaps we should take a risk. Perhaps we should just stop. I should just quit this PowerPoint doing something else. Perhaps I should have a table, a chair to stand on. <coughs> do anything else. But I'm that boring, so I'll just do the PowerPoint presentation. But I have to do some kind of risk. So when I looked at it yesterday, I thought, this is too boring. And this morning, I said, it's even more boring to this morning. <laughs> so I'll just give you like a puzzle. I'll do something else, a puzzle from some of the people I've met during the last, not centuries, but years, months, weeks, discussing creative industries and the intrinsic uh, factor. And uh, one of the people I met was actually Anne Bamford. She was here two years ago, and I just walked and came into this house, meeting Alan. Alan and I um, arranged this meeting. She was speaking, that's Anne, by the way. She's such, such a nice person, so I couldn't include a picture, but she could. It's more to sensory. Um, she says, but in, was in this, this place next to me. She had this comment. There's a major irony in education at the moment. While society and business increasingly values culture, arts and creativity, these areas are being reduced in the schools and in teacher training. Rather than as the core of innovative education for the future, the aesthetic and creative school subjects are increasingly marginalized. This is why. And what happened? Well, she actually, not intrinsic, she, she was speaking about the wolf facts as well, because she's been doing some um, research for UNESCO, among others. And what she knew, what, what she <coughs> saw was that the schools, these were primary schools almost, mostly primary schools, that the schools who, who put a lot of um, energy on and focus in teaching and art, they were the one who had the highest score in other subjects. So we sent uh, Anne Bamford to the government and actually, this is in Danish, I don't want to translate it, but she put in all the things that this was doing to other subjects. What were they learning? You can learn, are you teaching in arts or through arts, for instance? Um, and there was a lot of skills and commentaries you got from teaching in art. And actually, this is it, it is it is Danish written because the government actually did something about it. I think there was Jan, yeah, you were probably there. Were you there? No. Well, heck, well, that took. That did something about it. And that, that's it. <coughs> I noticed um, that Eddie, in the um, invitation, wrote, it's the economic stupid. It was a Bill Clinton quote. So, there was the war factor, and now to something completely different. It's the economic. I just put, I just went to, last week, two weeks ago, was it? I had a visit from Nick Van Sultu. He's the ambassador, Dutch ambassador in Denmark, and he's just, he was opening uh, something we call Future Textiles. And he told me, well, this is from his speak, his speak. He said, the creative industry is forming an increasingly important part of the economy for the Netherlands as well as in Denmark. And then now pounded out, pointed out that this is one of the six key factors that the government has identified, identified for being of special importance for future development and growth. Well, is a wake up call. Actually, the creative industry in the Netherlands was as large as petrol and air transport industry. 
together in 2005. In UK, I just found this one. Creative employment provides around 2 million jobs in the sector itself and in the creative roles in other sectors. That one is a important one. Employment in the sector has grown at double the rate, it should be, of the economic as a whole. And then uh, it's the same, just in this region, asking, you just, someone who met him yesterday, he was asking 645 <coughs> enterprises, and when you look at the numbers, they're increasing by 20.7%, uh, while all other industries are only 8.7. <coughs> but one of the, 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 the industries using creative industries, they have a much bigger growth than other industries. That's another part. This is wolf factor too. It's actually like in the primary school, there was a wolf factor about if you use art and more creative subjects, whatever you call them, you have a wolf factor in other subjects. And this is the same with the industry. We know that for sure. So it's a double wolf factor coming a part of, well, not inside out, but intrinsic, intrinsic factor somehow. All these. Into. 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 people that are not trained in a, a sort of formal way, but they come from the street. They follow someone, he, uh, this person transfer something and they start the job. Okay. And so um, for um, some years we were an accredited training agency, um, so we deliver formal training, uh, doing courses for young people but also for professionals. In the meanwhile, we were uh, developing also activity in the sense of managing uh, music festival or artistic events, so those kind of things, and artistic production. And uh, yes, I don't know if my, with my poor English I was able to make you understand something about this, uh, this uh, organization, but I wait your uh, question into if you want. To know something more, okay? Thank you. 
signing an artist and putting a track out, getting coverage on television, radio, and promoting our artists. So I've been in and out of the sector for the last, I'm not even going to work that out. <laughs> That's not because I'm not a brilliant mathematician. <laughs> just, uh, um, and I've been involved in facilitating just getting the information and the knowledge from the people that we've been working with across Europe into one document and bouncing very, very closely off um, Eddie Yang, Yap and Martin to just test theories, ideas and it's been a great privilege to work on this project. I've enjoyed it every single month. I'm Caroline Archer and I'm representing um, WAC, the Performing Arts College and we <coughs> provide, whereas I said we provide um, um, programs for young people from the age of 16 to 19, it actually goes below that. We also provide um, performing arts classes um, to children as well. Um, and the classes um, range during term time and, ha and half time during the summer as well. Um, we, so, so, so the var varied um, projects aimed at various, um, various people. We also work with um, children and young people who have disabilities. Um, so it's a very diverse and um, dynamic place to work. And essentially my um, part within WAC is providing 16 to 19 year olds um, a, a, a place to be able to re-engage back into um, education but in a non-formal non sense where they um, are able to um, develop and, and be part of a social um, group and develop their skills and, and aspirations. Yeah. Well, Martin again, just a few words. Representing the formal system, um, I'm quite curiously about how the non-formal system works here its own premise and how to build bridges between the formal and the non-formal. We do it somehow in the university college because we have this kind of knowledge trying with the, the, to link the practice with the education and the research. And whether you do use the art and the creative industries to, to train or educate in the arts or through arts, then I think there's a great importance to the society to keep looking at that. Don't miss the point, not only the economy. I won't repeat myself, but I'll mm. just ask the for that choice. Mm. Uh, I'm Anna. I work for the Dutch partner New Arts. We are situated in Arnhem, it's in the east of Holland, near Germany. Um, and New Arts is a project that's part of a bigger company uh, called the Art Company in Arnhem. And the Art Company runs a lot of uh, educational art projects in a neighborhood, but uh, also, I guess you can compare it how you work here. Uh, this, this organization uh, courses for young people and for adults. And New Arts is 
mostly focused on the new arts, so the urban arts. Um, we run a learning working environment for young people, uh, so they come and work with us. And uh, for example, there's a boy, it's a DJ, he would really love to learn more about this, but also learn how to give workshops, be an entrepreneur, etc. And we provide projects and uh, coaching so he can do his thing and learn. Uh, and we also have a project agency and uh, they can take care of the lifelong learning projects in Arnhem. So they do a lot of workshop in social centers, schools, etc. And that's again the place where the young people from the New Watch College can uh, assist and see how it goes in the life and learn from the trainers. And my job is uh, mostly international projects. So I coordinate the Aspire project uh, for, for our company. And uh, we do international projects with young people. For example, last month we went to visit, or we had an exchange, not that we visit with WEC and with College Arts in London. And we are busy now with a new project so the groups can come back. We also want to have more lines with the students, not only with the trainers and the <laughs> Okay, uh, my name is Bo. I come from a non-formal, value-based education called the Chaos Pilot. I heard of, of it, some of you. Um, we are training uh, talent, or, or young talents, or maybe call them creative, creative outsiders, we call them that sometimes, in entrepreneurship, or even better, in social entrepreneurship. Um, just before lunch, we were discussing, uh, some of you were discussing culture, business, and money. Uh, and it might be interesting to hear our business model because we get some funding from the state, a little bit of funding from the state, and then uh, the students are paying quite a lot for, uh, for the education. But we also have a commercial uh, department where we are training companies, and, uh, yeah, public and private companies, leadership, uh, innovation, create creativities, and stuff like that. Yes? Um, there's four different companies that are represented in eight different organizations, quite a lot of experiences in all regards. Um, and we should, um, we should get some uh, dialogue about some of the things that matters to us. And just for a start, we have prepared one question, and then we hope there will be other questions. And Bo, oh, he suggested already one question. Uh, uh, there will be other questions we can discuss afterwards. But, but the, fir the, for the first question, uh, we want to pose is uh, is about a relationship between the creative industries and the educational system uh, because you uh, some of you all of you maybe but some of you are working with in, in the creative industries with children and youngsters and giving them some informal qualifications and competencies uh, and how do you conceive the relationship between between what you are doing and um, informal, the non-formal sector, and the educational system. How do you see it now, and what kind of development uh, can you imagine? Would you, would you prefer? It's a big question, but it's not a, a new question, probably. So... Can you apply a little to that same question? You may. Just to make it a bit more provocating. Yeah. So I was thinking when I saw the trend, the romantic picture of the trend, that's a free bird. Isn't what you are all working with now, catching that bird and putting it back into the industries? Do you understand? Why no, no, all that's the same as in the art <laughs> But isn't it what we are doing now here is that we have street artists and everything else and think, wow, that's, that's formalized that so we can get some money from the European Union. And is that not... Uh, I can use the same uh, picture metaphor. What we are doing is color. We 
know? What we are doing yes. is bringing color to the industry. So the left side of the picture, uh, thanks to, or I hope, thanks to our work, is becoming not so gray. That is already. That's, uh, I think, that, that we are all agreeing in that. That's also what we were talking about. There's something, there's a, a quite an old fashioned thinking about you have to, if you are an artist, money is the demon. You know, because many people, are, it's a, it has been a, a very uh, uh, conscious strategy of the big company, uh, mostly in the United States and also, that you have to circulate that concept. Why? Because people like Manuel are really dangerous. Because they have the creativity and also have the economic tools. We have to avoid that old-fashioned thing about uh, what, what's the matter? I have to win money. Uh, you don't have to think that we are plenty of money. For example, Manuel will just survive. But at least you can survive, as Manuel said, you don't it's the old-fashioned way of thinking of the artist as you're walking in the morning in a restaurant and in the afternoon you're painting. Why cannot you be painting all day? Even if you get less money, you can be painting I think that we are also trying to change that, that concept between the economy and the artist. It's not the enemy, it's just the tools. 